Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. AITA, did I ruin family dinner by speaking up? I, 27 am, am the third of four siblings and have always felt like an afterthought. Lori 33, Chuck, 29 am, and J, 25 of, have always gotten the first and best from my parents and each other. I get the leftovers if I'm lucky. I haven't gotten a birthday present from any of my siblings in about 10 years, but I still get asked to pitch in for group gifts for each of them every year. On Friday night, we were having a family dinner, and it honestly felt like every other sentence was a dig at me, or a less, than subtle brag by my siblings about something they had been given by my parents that I was denied. They talked about how nice almost all of our weddings were, but made sure to mention it was, okay, that my wife and I had a small, low-key wedding. And it was okay, we loved it. But they brushed over that my parents paid for all of my siblings' weddings, but not mine. Because somehow they couldn't afford it, because they were saving up for Jade's wedding. They brought up how little student loans they have, because my parents helped them. All of them lived on campus at expensive four-year schools. I lived at home and went first to a very prestigious, very hard to get into watchmaking school. I got paid to attend this school, so I paid rent at home. My parents paid for my tools. And I appreciate the help. I really do. But they paid 120 to 150 each for my siblings, they gave me 7 for tools. But to them, it's equal. When I went back to school on my own, I didn't ask for money and wasn't offered it. When my brother went back to school they covered everything without him even having to ask. There were many other small moments comments about cars and other lifestyle choices, but what made me snap was my brother and his wife mentioning their marriage being so great because they do things like spontaneous dates, like the one they had the prior Friday night. On Friday night, when my parents called my wife and me at the last minute to cancel plans, they had to eat dinner at our house because they had to watch Chuck's kids because of an emergency. Turns out that emergency was a dinner for Chuck and my SIL at Texas Roadhouse. I spent hours making my grandpa's ziti and meatballs with homemade marinara because it's my mom's favorite. I wanted to scream at them more than anything, but instead I got up and left without saying a word, and my wife followed me. When my mom called me later to ask why I'd left, I explained exactly why. I explained the favoritism, the unfairness, and the fact that it doesn't feel like they care about me. She didn't say much, and I wasn't really looking for an explanation or an apology at the moment, I just felt like it was self-evident, but if she really didn't see it, I'd spell it out. Evidently, at least parts of what I said have been shared with my siblings, because now Chuck and Lori are furious at me and saying I ruined dinner, and my mom is upset that I am hurt. They say I'm immature for keeping score. AITA? My first draft contained some of this info, but I had to edit a lot to get down to the character limit. Some of this has been shared in other comments, but I'm just consolidating in hopes this is seen and answers questions. 1. There is no reason to believe I am not my father's child. The list of genetic coincidences that would be necessary for that to be the case is long and not worth rehashing. He doesn't have any male relatives that could explain it either. He has one sibling, my aunt, and none of his cousins have ever been in his life or even remotely local. I look just like my paternal grandfather. I always have. He died when my father was young, but by all accounts, he was a good father and is remembered fondly. 2. My younger sister has been the beneficiary of many, if not most of the things my parents chose not to give to me, but she did not ask for any of that and has been one of the only people consistently trying to make it right. For goodness sake, she was trying to fix it when she was six. She has definitely not seen everything, but she has tried to correct what she has seen. She is perhaps guilty of assuming the best of people and not asking questions, but she isn't heartless, and getting angry at her isn't going to fix anything. We talked for a long time after I posted this. She had been told she was contributing a birthday gift for me every year since at least 2018. She gave money to my older sister to buy my wife and me tickets to my favorite soccer team, and then when my wife and I inevitably posted about going to games, she assumed one of the games we went to each year was the gift she had been contributing money towards. There is a lot of backstory there, but the gist of it is that Jade and I have always gotten along well and Jade does not participate in singling me out negatively. She and her husband spend time with my wife and I frequently, usually just the four of us. 3. My maternal grandfather favored me growing up, but it's not like I got extra gifts or anything. He and I have very similar personalities, which is evident from a young age. I am on the spectrum, and I feel very strongly that were he my age, he'd have been diagnosed as well. We both struggle mightily with a lot of sensory things, but loud crowds and being surrounded by a lot of disparate sources of noise, like, perhaps, his loud Italian family, overwhelms both of us, 
So both of us hide for at least some portion of all family gatherings. Over time we started hiding together by just leaving to play box or lock ourselves in the kitchen to cook. As an adult, he has made comments that indicate he sees that I'm not being given as much, and in the last two to three years, he has definitely given more items to me than anyone else, things he wants me specifically to have a slash when he passes and that he wants me to enjoy now. That was definitely a source of tension on Friday. He is quite wealthy, and my older siblings are accusing me of trying to enrich myself through inheritance. I have no clue what his plans are, and I have not, and will never ask. It's not my business, he has always had a pathological need to make things even. Everyone gets the same number of boxes at Christmas, with as near as possible, the exact amount of money spent on each recipient, so I do not expect him to behave differently with his estate. I honestly expect that anything that doesn't go to charitable causes will be divided evenly, but I really, really think it's all going to charity. But where my older siblings see the monetary value of his record collection and view it as a financial windfall. I just see a beautiful collection of music I get to keep listening to. I'd never sell that. They feel that I am hoarding the antique watches he gave me. The most valuable of which is a 60s Timex Marlin. But again, they just want me to sell them and divide the cash. First of all, they aren't valuable except in sentiment. Second of all, Pop Pop is very much still alive and only gave them to me because he knows I will repair the ones I like and wear them. Selling them would be extremely rude and entitled. They are angry that he gave me his first nice car, because it does not have a nominal value, even now, it is too old to be valuable as a reliable vehicle, and is not old, rare, or desirable enough to be a collector's item. But to me, it's a sentimental item. It was his Sunday car for years, and while I've had to put a lot of work into keeping it running well, it's an excellent cosmetic condition. My older siblings are contesting that I am actually the favorite, and the very measurable and extremely generous financial gifts given to them by my parents are somehow dwarfed by their IMO very inflated estimation of the financial value of the gifts my grandfather has given me recently. 4. My paternal grandmother has increasingly favored me as I've aged. Again, this is not financial, and to my knowledge, she isn't in a position to leave me an inheritance, not that I'd even ask that of her. There's an old clock of hers made by a local clockmaker and housed in a handmade cabinet that I used to spend hours looking at when I was really young. She put multiple labels inside as early as I was five or six, saying that it belonged to me. But I didn't ask for that. I appreciate it and will gladly accept it if she still feels that way when the time comes, but I don't spend the time I spend with her as some sort of plot to steal her clock. I just like hanging out with my Alma. She's a funny lady who likes walking with my wife, my dogs, and me. She stays with us in our house on holidays instead of in the guest house my parents had built for her. My siblings are under the impression that she has somehow supported me financially. Again, unless there is something I am not aware of, she is not in the position to do this. 5. My wife and I will meet with my parents sometime over the next week to talk. I do not know what to expect, but I will be taking the time to write stuff down in preparation. I don't even know what I want from it, but I will be bringing up family therapy. About a week after that post, my wife and I sat with my parents and cleared there. As several people suggested I wrote down my thoughts. I compiled, to the best of my knowledge, a listing and full accounting of the disparity between what my siblings were given over the years and what I was given. I did sit down and do the math, and it turns out that while I was at the Technicum, I paid my parents more in rent than they ever paid for my tools. But the final reckoning came to between tilde $370 and K on the high end, Jade, to tilde $190 and K on the low end, Chuck, for how much my parents directly gave to my siblings that they never gave me. Sitting down and seeing the full amount all spelled out like that is probably the angriest I got during this whole mess. My parents had been aware there were discrepancies. Still, they pushed back on the actual amounts until we sat down and reviewed each major gift slash incident case by case. By that point, my dad admitted my reckoning was likely conservative. That was more or less the end of any productive talk that night. My dad claimed they didn't think it had gotten that bad, but wouldn't give any details about how they could have possibly not noticed. In the interim, Chuck and Lori continued to escalate their anger and continued to call and text me, my parents, and my extended family. I have not spoken to either of them directly since and don't expect too soon. Roughly a week after that first sit down, my mom and dad asked to meet again. Lots was said, but the gist is this they felt I was doing well and didn't need their help. Basically, they thought I would be fine without them. They admitted they probably lived outside their means and gave more to my older siblings than they should have and could never have given me that much. 
they claim the timing of my wedding lined up with probably the direst of their overspending slash lack of saving, and that they did not have the funds to live up to their promise, especially as they were paying for Jade's tuition, car and apartment at that time. They have offered money, they have offered to pay for vacations, a car and all kinds of stuff, but I think they don't really get it yet. My wife and I don't want their money, but we aren't sure yet what an ideal resolution to this looks like. At least they have admitted they were unfair and are open to working things out. My wife and I spent Easter with Jade, her husband and my grandparents, and my mom and dad came over in the evening. This seems to be more or less the new normal for now.